Okay, so today we have a simple chemistry example that relates to both those taking the environmental and the civil FE exams. So this is more on the environmental side, but we know for the civils we have to know chemistry, we have to know how to balance equations and how to do stoichiometry. So it's very applicable to both exams. So let's do this question. We're told for the complete combustion of octane, which is given by this chemical formula CAH18 for octane, present in gasoline, the mass in grams of oxygen required to burn 50 grams of octane is most nearly what? So we want to find the mass of oxygen required to burn 50 grams of octane. What is that most nearly? And we have to get the final answer in grams of oxygen. So let's write what we want to find. We want to find the grams of oxygen. Let's call it O2. So the, the grams of oxygen we need to completely burn 50 grams of octane. So now we will jump into the solution and we will begin by writing our chemical equation for combustion. Specifically for the complete combustion of octane in gasoline. So we know combustion reactions have a reactant side and a product side. On the reactant side we will have the octane which is going to be our hydrocarbon C8 and H18 and we know on the left side on the reactants you have oxygen right so that's what's being mixed there on the left side on the reactant side you always have that oxygen and just a hint there that under combustion in the environmental which is going to be on page 347 in the new FE handbook you have a bunch of combustion equations and you see how in all of them it includes oxygen so that's going to be on the left side, right? On the reactive side. So it's going to be the octane plus the oxygen. And on the product side, the right side, what do we have? We're going to always have CO2 and H2O if we have complete combustion. If you have complete combustion, you always have what? CO2 and H2O. So CO2 plus H2O. If you have incomplete combustion, you might have other things. You might have some soot or you might have some CO, which is carbon monoxide, which can, which is actually toxic. So that's the difference there. When you have complete combustion, you only have these two all the time. So now let's balance this thing. The first one is going to focus on the carbon. So how many carbons do we have on the left side? And let's compare that to the right side. On the left side, we have eight of the carbons, right? And on the right side, we only have one. So we only have one here. So what we will simply do is place an eight here. Because we have eight, we place an eight here. And we have eight of carbons now. So the carbons is balanced. Now we move on to the next one is the hydrogen. Next one is hydrogen. On the left side, we have 18. So we have 18 of the hydrogen, right? On the right side, how many hydrogens do we have? Here, you only have two, right? You only have two here. Two. So we need, this is bigger, the left side, the reactant side is bigger than this, but we know we can multiply two by a number to get 18, right? What goes into two gives us 18? It's going to be nine. All we do is take 18 divided by two and we get nine. So here we can simply place a nine, nine times two gives us a new number, which is gonna be 18. So we have 18 here, we have 18, so the hydrogens are balanced. And now we will do the last one, which is always going to be the oxygen. So on the left side, how many oxygens do we have? We have two. And on the right side, how many do we have? So here we have some oxygen, and so do we have here. We have both here and here. So here for the oxygen, 8 times 2 is going to be what? 16. So that's 16 oxygen then plus 9 times 1, this is like 9 of oxygen, it's just 9 here, right? So we have 9. So 16 plus 9 gives us a total of oxygen of 25. So now on the right side we have 25 of oxygen, on the left side we only have 2. You do the exact same thing. We take the 25 divided by 2 and we can completely balance the left side to the right side. All we do is take 25, 25 
divided by 2 and that gives us a decimal value which we can get rid of which is 12.5 so 12.5 times 2 gives us 25 right 12.5 times 2 gives us 25 so now it's actually balanced so let me erase all of this and this is how it should look like and everything is balanced if you do a final check but what I like to do is simplify this further if you want to you don't have to do it but you can simplify this further and get rid of this fraction because we don't like seeing these fractions what you can do is multiply the whole equation by what value by 2 so if I multiply the whole equation by 2 which is what's on the bottom here multiply that by 2 you take 2 times this so it's going to be 2c8 h18 for the octane plus you take 25 over 2 times 2 so 25 let me write that here over 2 times 2 gives us what these cancel it just gives us 25 so we just get this here as the front coefficient then that is going to equal to the product side so you take 2 times 8 you just distribute and you get 16 CO2 then you get 2 times 9 which is 18 H2O okay so you see how that looks neater and more so all the coefficients are whole numbers but again you can just keep the fractions and solve the question you don't have to do it this way but this is how you reduce it to just whole numbers to eliminate the fraction so now that's the first step is to have the balanced chemical equation now we will actually solve the question so we will start with the only value we're given a 50.0 grams of octane so we take that 50.0 grams of octane which is CAH18 that's what we start with and we know we're gonna do stoichiometry but before that we know this chemical equation the combustion equation relates to mole to mole right for every two moles of octane we need to have 25 moles of O2 for a complete combustion and we will use this equation when we do our stoichiometry analysis so now we're like okay you have grams of octane how can I get moles because we want to use the equation to relate the mole to mole ratios so we need to go from grams to moles and we have to use what we have to use the molar mass right we have to take into account the molar mass of octane in this case which has units of grams per mole so how can you get the molar mass of octane CAH18 you just use the periodic table right so you should have one in the chemistry section in the FE handbook so for octane we know we take C which is gonna be the 12 and we have 8 of that so you do 8 times 12 so let's do that here let me write the, the molecular weight of octane which is the same as the molar mass the way you do that you take C of 8 so you have 8 of the carbon right so 8 of the carbon which has atomic weight of 12 so you do 8 times 12 8 times 12 then you do plus you have 18 of hydrogen and hydrogen just has the atomic weight of 1 the atomic weight is 1 for hydrogen so you just do 18 times 1 and if you do that let me do the math you do plus 18 and you get about 114 and no the units are what it's going to be grams per mole grams per mole that's going to be the units for the molecular weight so what we can do here is say we can we know grams is here what's up here must come down here right so the units can cancel it has to what's up here must come down here so we know we will put c so g the grams c18 h18 and we know that's going to be grams so it's going to be 114 grams per one mole of C8 H18 so now these cancel right so now we finally got it into moles so we have moles and when we have moles here we can also use this chemical equation and relate the mole to mole ratio so with the chemical equation above we know here we have moles so it must come down here moles of C8 
H18. And now we know we need two moles of CH H18 for every 25 moles of oxygen. 25 moles of oxygen. And you might ask, okay, why did you choose moles of oxygen? Because that's what we want to find, right? We want to find the grams of oxygen, which we will get to. We're comparing the octane to oxygen. So we're going comparing the mole to mole ratio of octane to oxygen. So we know these cancel. So we're almost done. Now we have moles of oxygen. But we need to do what? We need to get grams of oxygen. And how can we do that? You use the molecular weight for oxygen. But we have, we know we have two of the oxygen. So the molecular weight of oxygen, molecular weight of O2 equals, let's go down here for O2, where's oxygen? It's this, right? 15.999. So it's about 16. So you do 2 times 16, 2 times 16, and we get 32. So this has units, again, of grams per mole. And this is for oxygen. We have 2, so you multiply 2 times the atomic weight of 16. Get 32. So now what we will write is we know for every 1 mole of O2, which is this, right? It can be this, and it must come down here. So for every one mole of O2, these cancel. We will have 32 grams of O2, right? One is on the bottom, 32 is on top. You have 32 grams of O2. And notice how everything canceled and the final units are grams of O2. And that's going to be what we do, right? That's going to be the answer. And you just do the whole math for that. You do the top portion divided by the bottom portion. And I believe we should get around 175.44 grams of O2. So here this should be our answer. And in this case, it should be A. So to finish off this video, I want to introduce and I'm excited to announce my new Civil FE prep course for the afternoon topics on the Civil FE exam. So I've been working on this course for some time now and I feel like it's finally time that it's released to help you pass the civil FE exam. So we cover all the concepts, all the topics with hundreds and hundreds of practice videos. So if we look at some of the course features, you will get a total complete PDF study planner. So this is made specifically for the civil FE exam with an equation sheet with a weekly plan a checklist, some exam tips, areas to improve section, and the big wins section. Again, this is specific to the civil FE exam that you will get with this course. Next, you will get 50,000 plus words of lesson notes that reference all the topics and equations you need to know for the civil FE exam. So these lesson notes come with full figures, full symbol explanations, and everything is built from scratch specifically for the civil FE exam. Now for the most important part, you will have access to hundreds of practice questions with full video solutions where I walk you through the step-by-step -step procedure needed to solve each question. And lastly, you will have access to hundreds of flashcards that are guaranteed to help you answer those conceptual questions on the civil FE exam. So on top of all these course features, you will have complete access to me when you have questions, get stuck on a question, need help setting up a schedule plan and a study schedule, or just need that extra guidance to help you stay on track. To learn more about this course, please check out the link in the description below. And if you have any questions at all, you can email me directly at farooq at directhub.net. Again, that's farooq at directhub.net.